uh, I think that the floor is floor is open already. So I uh, can can you hear me, Gabor, Kitty, others? I can only see you, you too. Yes, very well. It's good to see you. Yes, I hear. Okay. Hello, Przemyslav from from Washington DC. <laughs> <laughs> so it's great great welcome to all of you after the summer holiday and uh, um, by the end of August we we start our our second uh, open scientific seminar about administrative justice dealing with the uh, um, fundamental questions as definition uh, and standards uh, concerning international or internal standards uh, that occur when we try to talk about or uh, administrative justice or when we, when states try to, to do th something with with their system of administrative justice uh, uh, review of ad administrative decisions um, at this time uh, we we are uh, we are six as our, our research group uh, now has uh, one more member who is um, who is an old member coming from from the, our previous projects. So from from the Hungarian side, uh, we have uh, uh, Kitty Polak, we have uh, Gabor Huko in person this time, not uh, by video message. And from the Polish side, we have Agata Fedecik, uh, we have Przemyslav Ostojski, and uh, as a new member of, of our group is uh, Mateusz Pszynski. Uh, is everybody here? Yes. And uh, only before starting starting uh, this meeting, shortly before starting this meeting, we got an email and message from from Tremislav, uh, insisting on on his uh, being the first on the floor, as uh, as he has another uh, program, another uh, online meeting. So. Uh, I don't want, do not want to say anything more before I start our presentations. There will be six presentations of us, and this time we will start with Janislav Ostersky. Professor, the floor is yours now. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Pate, for your understanding and for the very kind introduction. And thank you that, uh, to you all that it's possible for me to to be the first today so i promise you i will next time i will be the, uh, the fourth and i will not uh, i will not uh, uh, take the possibility to to be the first as today but let me let me uh, tell something about the continuation of uh, what i uh, started uh, talking about the last time that means uh, previously i i was talking about the uh, case law of the european court of human rights with regard to the uh, judicial review in the competition law cases and today i would like to to go to the uh, uh, case law uh, of the court of justice of the uh, european union so it's more uh, accessible for us uh, because um, I'm sure all of us uh, uh, is uh, or was working on the uh, case law of the Court of Justice. So I hope uh, the, the, my presentation today will be more clear. Uh, so. Uh, from the uh, very beginning of the uh, existence of the Court of Justice of the EU, uh, uh, the judicial review was the uh, first and the most important work of this court and was crucial uh, for the uh, European communities and then for the European Union. And uh, the very characteristic of the European law is that the judicial review of, uh, of administrative decisions uh, is exercised not only by the Court of Justice, but of course also by national courts, 
what I'm talking about it because the uh, it's the very characteristic, as I said, uh, of the shape of the European Union. And in comparison to, uh, I would say, normal federal states, it is not uh, usual to uh, that uh, federal law is exercised by the by the state courts or the land courts or national courts in the EU. Uh, and uh, at the very beginning of the uh, uh, European Union, uh, it was also crucial the demarcation between the jurisdiction of the European Court uh, of Justice and national courts. And uh, on the background of the uh, this demarcation uh, is the principle that this jurisdiction uh, of administrative uh, uh, courts of the Court of Justice is, is parallel to the jurisdiction of administrative authorities competent to issue a des decision in the analyzed area, that means in the competition law. And uh, I think it's uh, also important to to indicate that uh, national courts, when national courts rule on competition law, uh, in a competition case, uh, which was the subject of the commission decision, uh, the national court cannot uh, decide counter to the decision adopted by the commission. And uh, uh, with this rule, uh, or not uh, bounded uh, the European Court, that means Court of Justice. And uh, it is the, uh, very uh, rarely in the administrative law, and especially in the ju uh, judicial review law, that uh, a court, the national courts, are bound by the uh, commission decision and it can show us the the uh, background of the uh, uh, all competition law uh, where the commission has very strong position uh, to, I would also like to say very shortly about the principles of judicial review they are rooted in treaties and they are of the uh, very general uh, characteristic and the competition law that is inherent in european law uh, generally the main role uh, playing the uh, principles of unity and consistency of union law uh, and it is uh, the case that the all courts and all administrative uh, authorities uh, should uh, uh, apply the European law, especially the competition law, in the same way. That means all these uh, principles, standards there were created by the Court of Justice and are still creating, should be uh, in the very consistent a way um, applied by all courts and administrative authorities. Uh, and on the other and the one hand, the uh, Court of Justice created the, the such principles that are related to the free market and free movement of uh, products and uh, services, like the effectiveness of the European law. And on the other hand, it created also the standards uh, related to procedural fairness, especially the right to be heard of, uh, of all individuals and the right of defense. They're very general uh, European standards. And the third thing uh, in terms of the, uh, the uh, principles of uh, European law in terms of the competition law cases is the mutual trust in the common values on which the union is based. And uh, uh, it is a presumption that all uh, standards they, they are and were created by the Court of Justice 
uh, will be implemented in also national courts and national authorities. And uh, how can be standards of judicial review created by the Court of Justice? There are two ways. Uh, the first is uh, regulated by the Article 263 of the Treaty of the Function of the European Union, and this so-called directly uh, direct uh, way uh, by hearing and deciding cases uh, from complaints against European Commission decisions, and the second way is uh, when it comes to the preliminary rulings. Uh, uh, regulated in Article 267. And uh, with regard to the uh, general uh, way of the, uh, of the consideration of cases in the competition law, uh, general rules are related to the so-called open record regime and the active role in fi fact finding of the uh, general court of the eu uh, but at the same time it's uh, it should be emphasized that the court of justice is not required to take any evidence and to determine the facts of the case but as i will tell uh, in uh, one minute uh, it is the rule that they are they are uh, taken and they are uh, determined uh, during the uh, judicial review. So uh, the first standards uh, the, uh, I would like to, to uh, talking about more broadly, uh, but in a very short time, I promise, is the standard of the, the so-called uh, not substitution with uh, court of justice reasoning for that of the commission. That means uh, in, the con in contrast to the uh, normal uh, ab initio proceedings uh, conducted by, uh, for example, um, uh, national courts, the uh, uh, court of justice is operating in judicial review in administrative cases like the each um, other uh, administrative court. That means uh, it is only the uh, uh, the review. That means it's not the uh, proceedings from the very uh, beginning where all facts are uh, considered or facts are uh, determined by the court of justice. And on the uh, uh, Court of Justice must limit itself by examining it, whether the uh, competition authority uh, committed a manifest error or constitutes a misuse of power or uh, whether the authority manifestly exceeded the limits of its discretionary power. And it is the, the uh, general uh, rule, as I said, but uh, this rule uh, of the so-called manifest error was criticized uh, in 2002 and, uh, and then and later, for example, in 2011 in, in uh, various cases uh, considered by the uh, uh, general court, uh, especially in, the, uh, in cases Tetra Laval and uh, KME Germany and Schalke, the Court of Justice stated that it is not only the role, the, the uh, role of uh, general court that uh, it considers the so-called manifest error, but it should uh, provide, it should uh, review if the all information gathered by the uh, competition authority is sufficient to justify the, the conclusions drawn from uh, the uh, record gathered by administrative authority. That means uh, uh, this is the more tough, more strict approach uh, represented in the, the, the mentioned cases. 
And uh, nowadays, it is the the strict approach is uh, is uh, very popular. It's uh, the principle, I would say, in the newest cases of the uh, general court and the uh, uh, court of justice. Uh, and when it comes to the intensity of the judicial review, I should also uh, say that uh, uh, this examination of factual fine findings of competition authorities by the European Court uh, doesn't mean that there are no limits to the to its power. Uh, and the very cr clear test, very clear boundaries were indicated by uh, in the case law of the Court of Justice, where was it said the gener general court uh, uh, is required only to to, uh, to examine where uh, the strength strength of evidence and the arguments submitted by parties that means by also by uh, European Commission that means not ev not everything has to be examined has to be reviewed by by uh, European Court by judicial review but only the uh, the most important evidence uh, there were the uh, basis for uh, the decision of the commission. Uh, in other words, uh, it should be said that uh, there is the principle of, of reason during the um, judicial review. And uh, finally, I should, uh, it should be noted also the uh, rule of judicial review uh, during the uh, by the uh, European courts that is related to the uh, decisions uh, following the French tradition uh, the uh, court of justice uh, uh, hands uh, down basically the uh, declaratory declaratory uh, judgments uh, in which there is uh, the, declares void the uh, uh, administrative actions. They were um, the contrary to the uh, legal rules. Uh, and the exception of this uh, principle is the so-called full jurisdiction uh, taken by the uh, general court. And uh, it should be noted that uh, uh, despite the fact that the uh, Court of Justice declares the act void, it is, indi it is indicated in the literature that these rulings have basically the constitutive nature. That means uh, this is manifested in the restoration of the legal situation of party to the moment before the challenge act took effect. It is very strong, I would say, uh, legal effect of this, uh, of these judgments. Uh, for example, in the, the other, for example, in the other uh, jurisdiction, like in the United States or in Poland, uh, courts after judicial review can only repeal set aside the decision and not to uh, declare void. And uh, when it comes to the exception to this rule, uh, in some cases, uh, like uh, with regards to the uh, periodic penalties uh, and the fines, they were imposed by the European Commission of the Entrepreneurs uh, the uh, regulation one from the 2003 in article 31 uh, provides that our court has unlimited jurisdiction to review decision in which the commission has set a fine or periodic penalty on undertakings. 
And under this power, the court, the court may annul, reduce, increase the fines. That means can decide uh, uh, on the merits of the case. It's very rarely in administrative uh, law that uh, the courts uh, exercising judicial review uh, can uh, decide on the merits of the case instead of the uh, administrative decision of, for example, the European Commission. And in exercising this power, general court is authorized to substitute its own judgment for sanction imposed by the commission. And uh, on the on the end, I would like to say uh, several uh, words about the second way in which uh, court of justice is uh, creating the the uh, principles, the standards of judicial review. That means the, uh, the, the way of uh, preliminary rulings. And it was created, uh, the, the basic uh, standard in this uh, adjudication of, of the Court of Justice in this way, uh, that was related to, to provide the effective judicial protection for individuals. And uh, in the case of Konin uh, Klike, sorry, I am not a, uh, uh, fluent in the uh, Scandinavian languages. Court of Justice indicated that national courts should provide effective remedies, and consequently, consequently, the national court has the power to adopt a ruling that differs from the decision of regulatory authority. That means also the, the national courts uh, can or allowed, uh, but not forced, to substitute in the very rare cases uh, the administrative decision taken by the uh, uh, competition authority. But still the, the, the rule is to adjudicate by quashing by or by uh, setting aside or by uh, uh, declaring void the decision but when it was uh, needed in the circumstances of the case uh, the national court should also uh, substitute the administrative decision thank you very much and uh, Sorry for my long uh, speech today. Have a good conference and see you uh, again shortly. Thank you very much, Janislav. And thank you for, for the detailed explanation about, uh, about the European Court of Justice's uh, position in competition cases. And um, um, I'd like to say a uh, warm welcome to other participants outside of our research group, of our team. Uh, Dafton, Dafton to all of you. And uh, I think now we, we continue with, uh, with our presentations. Uh, last time in July, Gabor Hulko um, uh, was not present in person. He sent a video presentation uh, dealing with uh, also with European dimensions. And uh, now I turn to give the floor to Gabor uh, to, to give his uh, personal presentation this time. Gabor, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. I will try to share my screen to see my presentation. Just go ahead. Yeah, it is like this, or it is too small as I see, no? One moment, please. A bit small. Yeah, a bit small, so we try another one. And no, it should be better, no. 
Is it? It, it is. It is quite small, as I see. I, I'm, I am. I am. We can see it. We can see it. You can see or it, I, or I can see it. Just go you ahead. You can see it. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, <clears throat> uh, dear professor, dear participants. Uh, thank you very much for the warm welcome, and uh, I'm really happy to be here, uh, also in person or or online, and not like like uh, uh, the last uh, uh, on the last issue or the last. Uh, last uh, possibility. Uh, my presentation then uh, dealt uh, with the judicial activism of the European Court of Justice, or the European Court as I will refer to it uh, here and after, uh, or in my presentation, I, I will try to uh, keep the European Court of Justice. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, as to my research, there are two parts. Uh, one is dealing, or the first part is dealing with this, this issue of judicial, judicial activism of the European Court of Justice. How does it affect uh, the national legislators, the national courts, and especially the administrative courts and the, and the constitutional courts? <laughs> Um, and uh, and, this, and this, in the second part of my research, I will deal a little bit more with the questions of effectivity of the administrative judiciary, uh, especially uh, especially based on the experiences of the Slovak uh, High uh, Supreme Administrative Court, which is the which is the newest and the, uh, which is the newest administrative court in Europe, as to my uh, as to my knowledge. Uh, but uh, today I would like to go on, uh, uh, go on a little bit uh, with my presentation on uh, judicial activism, and I would like to start uh, with the uh, with the last uh, uh, last uh, slide of my uh, presentation, which I was not uh, pre present in person. Uh, basically, uh, the the thought is uh, that uh, uh, I I try to I to try to dig deeper into the uh, problematic and. Uh, uh, try to uh, catch or try to formulate some more general conclusions on the judicial activism of the uh, of the European Court of Justice. Uh, basically, we can say that uh, the judicial activism, in some ways, uh, defines or represents or an overreach of the EU law. Basically, the court uh, can, in this way, establish new fields of common EU policies. <laughs> Basically, we can talk about power uh, installation by interpretation, which is which is quite an interesting fact because, uh, in this case, the questions of uh, legitimacy uh, are also uh, also tackled. Uh, but uh, if we if we uh, take a closer look at the national regulations or, or the regulation of uh, more or less the Visegrad states or. Uh, I took under consideration also some some interesting cases from Germany, from Austria, or from Romania. Uh, by the way, as I will talk about later in my presentation, uh, basically uh, the the most important thing or the most important issue uh, of the judicial activism of the European Court of Justice is the case when it threatens or or it uh, I wouldn't say it attacks, but in some way it deals with, with basic values and questions of sovereignty of the member states, of the national states. I wrote down several exception, uh, examples like traditional family concepts, rights of minorities, uh, the role of Christian tradition, child protection, but uh, but uh, also uh, also wrote down the decision of a country court in Brno, which is a decision uh, from last year, uh, from August last year, uh, and which has a very very strong connection to administrative procedure and to 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 a registry office and also also to a traditional family concept because. Uh, because if you take into account the theoretical problem, for instance, the, the Hungarian constitution defines that uh, that uh, uh, a mother is a, a woman and the uh, and the and the father is a man. Uh, the similar uh, and and, and the, in this way, the constitution itself defines some values uh, on a traditional family concept. Uh, uh, in the case uh, which I which I present or which I highlighted here in, in the, the decision from last year. From Bruno is from a, a, a decision of an administrative court. Uh, there was a case uh, where a, a child had two fathers, uh, two males, uh, and the registry office uh, had uh, not, uh, not uh, had a problem to deal with this problem. Deal with it because because in the in the register in the self register you have also a classification for mother and a classification for father. 
and the legislation uh, did not oversee that uh, in some cases uh, that a child can have two mothers or two fathers in his birth or in, or in, in her birth certificate. So uh, it has also some foreplay in the, at the Constitutional Court and the Supreme Administrative Court, but this is the latest decision uh, in the Czech Republic. Uh, and basically the court decided that, that uh, uh, the registry office, the uh, matrimony office has some way or has to find some way to deal with this problem uh, and to uh, and to file the two fathers of the child. Later, uh, in October, a new legislation was proposed by the Ministry of Interior of the Czech Republic. So in the end, the, the, the regulation was changed to accommodate this problem. But, uh, but it is also a very interesting question as as uh, uh, as uh, uh, of course in this concrete concrete case uh, there were there the, the parents were uh, were uh, uh, the, the child uh, and the parents were from the United States or, or, or the child was adopted uh, uh, based on a based on a uh, decision from the United States so there was there was only a, a slight or a <clears throat> Uh, not in a, uh, or, or there was a slight European overreach. However, the the case is uh, that at the moment the Czech regulation allows uh, to uh, differ from this traditional family concept, which is laid down by the constitution, by the fundamental law in Hungary. Uh, of course, I am absolutely aware that the Hungarian fundamental law is not valid in the Czech Republic, but uh, in this way we can see uh, the differences between values of each member state uh, and uh, what is what is uh, uh, acceptable in one may not be acceptable in in other uh, so so this is this is the basic problem of the judicial activism uh, whether the european court of justice has in general the power to extend uh, or uh, in in some way uh, to obstruct some some values or the sovereignty of the member states and this is the problem uh, which i try to try to uh, come closer a little bit uh, in uh, my presentation and in my research the first thing uh, is the background uh, and i wrote down the uh, european court of justice interpretation of uh, of the primacy of the EU law, uh, it is it is a simplified view. I know it is more differentiated, but uh, but this is the main philosophy, uh, as I uh, as I would say, based on these. Uh, I highlighted some some decisions of the European Court of Justice, the Van Genden laws, the Costa versus Enel, the International Handelsgesellschaft, the Simmental case or the Ciola case, uh, which also was uh, was uh, uh, binding for uh, administrative acts. <clears throat> But but the basic basic concept or the basic doctrine of the European Court of Justice is that the EU law is uh, has primacy is absolute and unconditional, and in some cases uh, the CEU uh, argues also uh, on the on the fact that it has uh, primacy over the constitutions of the member states. The, it may be a, a little bit a different position of some member states, but but. <clears throat> And I'm saying I, I'm telling it once more. It, it is a, it is a very simplified view in my position. But but basically, this is the direction what I see the see the the, the European Court of uh, Justice uh, goes, the, and uh, and therefore it is it is it is quite an interesting milestone. But it it is not it it came not from a day uh, to another, but but it has a long long. Uh, if you see the Van Genden laws uh, case uh, was like uh, in 1933, uh, 63 story. So, so, so there is quite a quite a history history on it. Uh, but uh, this has changed, or uh, and and also there is a differentiation on the, or a different perspective of the uh, of the West European states and the and the East European states, if I might say so. Although uh, I uh, better like to use the the term post. Uh, so socialistic states, <clears throat> because their historical uh, experience a little bit different on on these matters. So I, I think that, especially in the Visegrad states, the or the post socialistic states, we can uh, we can we can see or we can experience a little bit of skepticism uh, about uh, a, a general unification procedures. Uh, but if we if we if I if we check or if we uh, get a closer look at at state models uh, of approach, uh, I would make a differentiation 
uh, between non-constitutional and constitutional uh, legal norms, as as there is there is also a different approach from the member states and the and, and the courts, not only the from the administrative courts, but also from the from the constitutional courts of the member states usually. Of course, I'm absolutely aware that there is a division on primary and secondary AU law, but uh, but uh, uh, during this research, I, I consider this uh, not, uh, well, it is an important question, but not so relevant uh, if we, uh, not, not, not an extremely relevant question if we are dealing with values, uh, with questions of values uh, and, and sovereignty. Uh, and also, also another division uh, there is, uh, or more important division for me is the uh, is the division of common EU policies and non-common EU policies. But basically, the division the the, uh, the division uh, where where we can, <clears throat> uh, in one hand, define a group of of uh, of EU policies which should be common for all member states, <clears throat> because also. Uh, because in in these policies, uh, it is uh, uh, unquestionable that the that the, the EU uh, or the uh, EU law has uh, some kind of superiority. Uh, if we are dealing with uh, non-constitutional legal norms, basically statutes, laws, uh, ordinances of of uh, some kinds, uh, there is a ten there is a the trend and tendency in the administrative judiciary not to go against the CEO decisions or EU policies, so they try to conform it. Uh, and usually, uh, especially we can abso uh, observe it uh, in the case of France or Germany or or uh, or, uh, or Belgium also, uh, that there is an active consultation and communication with the European Court of Justice, uh, even informal communication. But usually, uh, if there is a conflict between the EU law uh, and uh, and uh, uh, and the national uh, law, the, the member states' law. Usually, the solution is to change the national legislation, uh, which uh, which uh, can come after after a court decision. But it, it, it can be it can be it can be it can follow a court decision. But it can be also before a court decision. It was it was more or less the case which I was talking about my last presentation in the in the uh, tax value added tax uh, case in in the Czech Republic. The, the national legislation was changed. Uh, what is what is the what is the situation or what is the state in 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 the case of constitutional legal norms? Uh, it is very differentiated, I I, I might add, uh, because uh, because uh, uh, it is like uh, uh, the member states usually declare that the uh, EU law has supremacy, but uh, also the doctrinal approach of the most EU member states. Uh, uh, but not only the doctrinal approach, uh, what you can read in books and theoretical works, but but also also the the you usually or or oftentimes the the case case law of uh, the constitutional courts or supreme courts uh, or supreme administrative courts, uh, they usually uh, declare in one way or another that the constitutional basis of a given member state is. Or has primacy. Uh, I therefore write uh, wrote down here in my in my slides that that the constitutions has rather a primacy. Uh, so so there is there is quite a, quite a, quite a careful approach. I, I observed it also in the Czech and Slovak lit literature, uh, where basically they are, they they call it a concept or a doctrine of borrowed sovereignty. Sovereignty that means that the EU, the European Union, has uh, a, a subsidiarity, subsidiary uh, sovereignty, uh, or a uh, or a, a subsidiarity which originates at the member state or comes from the member states. So basically, no no legal regulation or no actions of the European Union should not go against the sovereignty of the member states because because it's not an original one what the EU has, it's a borrowed one what the EU has. The, although uh, in the decisions and all in the literature there are uh, the doctrine is declared but but usually usually uh, the uh, in the in the court cases it is a more subtle approach and they always try to sometimes somehow bend the the by interpretation to bend the the national rules to the EU law. 
uh, also, if we are looking or we, we take a look at the constitutional courts, uh, there are there are also different approaches. Uh, for instance, everyone knows, or I, I think it is quite a common knowledge, uh, the uh, court uh, decision in Ge in Germany about the European Central Bank's bond buying program, which uh, which which was which was quite quite an important one in this matter. Uh, and in this matter, it uh, the, the the German Constitutional Court had a very clear opinion on uh, German constitutional supremacy. Uh, and uh, and and I I might add that there are some some decisions also the Polish Constitutional Court uh, the last one if, if I recall it correctly is from 7th uh, October uh, 2021 uh, K3 uh, per 21 uh, which uh, explicitly declared the uh, supremacy of the Polish Constitution uh, and also also there are some very very interesting decisions uh, of the Roman Constitutional Court which, which declared uh, basically that the, the similar thing uh, but uh, even though uh, the constitutional courts are are quite often very very careful uh, with 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 uh, the definition of constitutional or or EU law supremacy the the, the baseline the ground line is that uh, that uh, uh, the basic values declared uh, by the constitution or the basic uh, concept of member state sovereignty shall be uh, shall be uh, kept uh, shall be kept uh, as, as 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 something supreme or something higher than the than the EU uh, regulation. Uh, so uh, so have, have to have to solve this problem of what 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 to what to do with this thing. Uh, what to do with this issue? Uh, the, the first and most important thing would be to have clear rules of hierarchy. Uh, that means uh, of EU norms, constitutions, other legislation, other le legal sources. To have a clear system uh, or a very very clear system, how these uh, very ver various norms uh, are uh in a in a system together because it, it is rather a complex system uh, and also uh, small problems which seem small at the time can grow to a very very large uh, large measure uh, at the current current state i formulated some proposals some general proposals from interpretation uh, from the experience which i made based on based on the research of uh, of the uh, of the court cases or the uh, constitutions uh, of uh, of some uh, selected states uh, i think that the core values of uh, the constitution the core values uh, of sovereignty declared by the member state constitution should be unaffected by the by the work of the european court of justice this needs to have primacy it the, the, this needs to needs to be respected at the moment uh, also on the field of common uh, community policies of the eu uh, these rules uh, these eu rules should have primacy even before the constitutional rules but under the constitution it uh, under the con con condition that it goes not against the core values declared by the member state constitution uh, and in and in other cases uh, national rules shall have primacy of course uh, under the constitution uh, under the condition that they don't go against the principal aims of the european integration which is at the moment i might add uh, more or less uh, or a little bit more uh, an economic uh, economically based uh, based uh, cooperation uh, of course, this this gills under the condition that the EU rules have direct effect. So uh, basically, this is I think what the what the member states uh, courts uh, could do about uh, uh, an interpretation. Of course, they are more careful than uh, today uh, I am because this is a this is a scientific presentation and not not a court case. So so they have to. The courts have to watch also uh, at, a, at a type of factors, but uh, but but in the end, uh, and uh, uh, and I think uh, uh, it is most important question that it is not uh, the uh, uh, question of uh, court decisions, but it is a question of political decision uh, that where should we take the European Union? Should we have a more centralized or more localized EU? Because this question or answering to this the, the answer to this question could lead to more clear rules of uh, normative hierarchy and the, to to a more clear rules of uh, judiciary effectiveness thank you very much for your attention thank you very much for this uh, extremely interesting and uh, far, far not an easy easy topic 
the primacy, supremacy, or hierarchy of the European legal systems, you know, the national and the European laws. And um, I hope that the continuation of, of our presentations will be as exciting as there, uh, there were um, for this time. Now we turn to the ladies' section, and I'd like to give the floor to, to our Polish presenter, Professor Agata Fedecik. Are you ready to, to start your presentations, Agata? I cannot hear you well. Okay. So if please give somebody, give some sound. Uh, okay, so I have to change my computer. So if uh, my Hungarian colleague can give her presentation now, I will do that in the meantime. So. You offer your place now to Kitty, Kitty Polak, to give her presentation and you change your yes. computer meanwhile. Yes, okay. I don't want you to wait for me. Okay. But now now I can hear you. It's better than, than before. Okay. But uh, others, still others can can others uh, hear Agatha Fedetrick? Yes, perfectly. Yes, loud and clear. Okay. Yeah. The floor is yours. No need to change. Okay. Uh, but I'm afraid that I can't present my presentation on that computer. That's why I need to change it. So if I, if I go ahead with my presentation, I can start now. Okay? Please start your lecture then. Uh, okay so first of all uh, i uh, would like to say that the second uh, topic of my speech was uh, chosen uh, very carefully and uh, at the beginning I, I, I thought that even provocatively because when we are talking about actio popularis in uh, polish law especially against administration activity uh, it's not popular so uh, I deal in my research with the issue of protection of the individual in relations uh, with the administration. And uh, in principle, it is up to state uh, to shape uh, the way the uh, um, individual can uh, go to church to control the administration. Without much controversy, it is accepted that the task of courts controlling administration is both to protect subjective rights and uh, the obje objective legal uh, order. And uh, thinking about uh, protecting obje objective legal order, I thought about Actio Popularis. Sorry for, and, for interrupting again. Can you give us a picture? Because we can only have sound. Uh, as I said, uh, no, I can't, uh, using this computer, I can't oh. do anything without uh, uh, speaking. Okay, only sound. No. Yes, only sound. Please go ahead, thank you. So okay, uh, so... Um, uh, what is more the special importance of the right to a court in a dispute between an individual and public administration is emphasized due to the specifics of the administrative legal relationship and the risk of uh, arbitrariness of the decision by, made by the public, public authority. And uh, since the individual public re administration relationship uh, it is the, the latter that retains the dominant position. Why not create a judicial review of public administration based on Actio uh, Popularis? And while preparing my uh, today's speech, I came across a publication on Hungarian law. And uh, uh, here, uh, as you are an expert, I would like to only uh, said that uh, according to that book, Publication, publication. Um, uh, 
it appeared that in Hungary there was a significant constitutional change in uh, 2012 and according uh, to that change, modifying powers of the constitutional court, the basic law introduced three types of constitutional complaints and abolished the Actio Populari. So as I understand well, uh, you use the Actio Populari in your uh, public uh, law and uh, in the relation between um, individual and uh, state. Uh, actually, we don't, we didn't have, we don't have uh, such uh, regulation in our uh, Polish uh, system. And uh, when we are talking about the uh, the uh, way of shaping uh, the rights to complain against uh, public administration uh, activity, I would like to mention um, uh, Lord Diplock's statement uh, from the case from 1982. And in that statement, he said that uh, uh, it would, in according to the Lord's view, be a great lacuna in uh, his, uh, it means, uh, uh, English system of public law if a pres uh, pressure group like a federation, that case uh, involved the federation, or even a single public spirited taxpayer, were prevented but outdated technical rules of locus standi from bringing the matter to the attention of the court to vindicate the rule of law and get the unlawful contact stopped. So uh, why not give the very open possibility to control administrative activity? And uh, we can also imagine the advantages of such solution. For example, increased control over the actions of the public administration and uh, since anyone, and not just those who have a specific interest in it, uh, in Polish law it is a legal interest, can demand verification or the correctness of uh, actions taken by uh, administrative um, pu public administration. And uh, this would even lead to more complete protection of the legal order. And then, one may even be tempted to argue that the Actio Popularis uh, would be part of the implementation of the rule of law. According to the, this principle, public administration bodies act on the basis and within the limits of the law. And also from the perspective of the administration itself, such a compliant could have an advantage. It would strengthen its competence since mindful uh, of the popular nature of the compliant, it would be more carefully carrying out its current task. And despite the several arguments in favor of the mesh, uh, in favor of the Actio Popularis, um, we have to be prudent uh, while applying such rule. And uh, the next question, uh, that is obvious in such situ situation. Why then it is appropriate to link the control of public administration to a specific interest? In Polish law, as a rule, it is legal interest. So first of all, I would like to emphasize that uh, legal rules that shapes the subject entitled to file a complaint in connection with the activities of the public administration um, are not this necessary be created in uniform way. Uh, what I mean is that the certain areas of activity, such control should be linked to the demonstration of a violation, whether of subjective rights of legal interest. As an example, I want to point to individual administrative acts. These include, for example, administrative decisions then it should be up to the persons whose rights or obligations are shaped by such a decision to access what to assess whether they uh, there has been a violation of the law and uh, it is to these subjects that the right to complain should be granted in the first place and to decide whether to initiate a review before an administrative court or to put it uh, in another way 
whether, for example, I request, I request the initiation of proceedings by the public administration uh, because uh, I want to, for example, purchase a, a weapon. In Poland, the purchase of weapons uh, is possible only after obtaining an administrative permit. Uh, it is uh, the spur of my decision. Then um, it means that it is at my disposal. So uh, this is also uh, in my disposal should be uh, the decision whether I want to uh, complain against uh, the decision taken in my case, uh, whether in case that I'm not satisfied with, uh, with that decision. And um, possible shortcomings, because uh, linking um, the possibility to uh, the access to the court with legal interest uh, also is not the perfect solution. Uh, there are uh, shortcomings and uh, how to challenge them. Uh, for example, uh, the solution can be uh, allowing public entities such the prosecutor, public prosecutor uh, or ombudsman uh, to file uh, compliance. And the prosecutor and the ombudsman uh, do not act in the case of their own interest. Uh, they don't represent individual interest, but uh, they um, represent general interest um, like um, the uh, respect of rule of law or human and civil um, rights. And in case of administrative activity involving the adoption of acts uh, that have many addresses, uh, I mean uh, acts of an abstract and general nature, e.g. acts belonging to acts, uh, for example, of local law, uh, then the compliant capacity can be shaped more broadly. Uh, not only when there has already been a violation of interest and uh, therefore ex post, but also ex ante control. Uh, what is important? Shaping the control of public administration on the basis of uh, axia popularis, not linked to any individual interest of the compliant or nor limited uh, in time, can cause uh, many legal questions like uh, uh, whether uh, such solution is in line with the principle of legal certainty. Uh, in science, it is pointed out that this uh, is the main value that the law should respect. The right to carry the qualification certain is uh, to promote the need of security, which is one of the basic human needs. And the principle of legal certainty derives from the from a broad set of principles that protect citizens' trust in the state, the predictability of the law, confidence in the law, and the credibility of the order established by the law. And uh, just to sum up uh, my uh, um, oral uh, presentation, uh, I would like to say that the uh, formation of the legitimacy uh, of compliance should be done taking into account the degree of development of the country, including uh, historical experience. However, it is always necessary to carry out an axiological calculation, consideration, and uh, balance the implementation of uh, many values uh, sometimes they are uh, in opposition uh, to each other, like uh, the necessity to protect human rights, the necessity uh, to implement the rule of law, or legal certainty. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation. That was a... Uh, uh, interesting and uh, dealing with the important questions of, of administrative judiciary. The, the Actio Popularis uh, or standing procedures without personal um, locus standi was uh, the characteristic of the previous constitution in Hungary 
the the constitutional review at the constitutional court of uh, legislation acts of parliaments government decrees local government decrees uh, could be obtained by anybody without any personal interest in the case but today we do not use that uh, that kind of uh, uh, petition or that kind of um, motion to start the procedure today at the constitutional court uh, the complainants should have local standi they should uh, uh, present their own case so they cannot uh, cannot start procedures without any personal interest but for for more than 20 years it was it was one of the main characteristics of the of the hungarian constitutional order um, but uh, without delay now i'd like to pass the floor uh, to to our uh, hungarian presenter uh, Hungarian member of, of our team, Kitty Pola. Kitty, the floor is yours for your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I am sharing uh, my presentation. Um, uh, sorry for just, uh, it only gives me the possibility to give Firefox and the whole screen. Do you see my PPT? No. I am very sorry, I don't. Do you see my uh, PPT presentation? Sorry for. Not yet, not yet. Okay. You can see your screen. So do you see my screen now? Uh, sorry. Yeah, we, see, we see the screen, yes. What, what are you so thinking you, of? Do you oh. see my PPT too? No, no PPT. Not just the bottom of your screen. Okay. <laughs> but Firefox or Dostyameg, and 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 so so there are two sentences. Maybe okay. you can start. Maybe you can start your presentation, and when you uh, when the presentation is on, uh, like on the whole screen, then then you can share your screen, and maybe maybe the, in in that way it it could work. Mm -hmm. Okay, I uh, I try to uh, make your suggestions, so I. In this way, you see my screen? No. Try to share once more your screen. So start the presentation. Why. Start the presentation and, and start sharing the uh, your screen. Okay, so I shall start. Oh, okay. I can choose right now. You're very right. Thank you very much, Gabor. For yes, your help. You. You're welcome. So I think you see right now the novel rules of the ministry court proceeding. Yeah, yeah, it is better now. Thank you very much. So good afternoon. Um, good afternoon to, uh, to all. My today's uh, topic is titled as the novel rules in administrative court proceedings to accelerate the receiving of the final decisions. The acceleration of administrative law suites is always a very current dilemma. This was also a very important question during the codification of the new Hungarian Code on Administrative Court Proceedings. As before entering into force of the code in 2018, it was not unusual that administrative proceedings uh, with administrative court proceedings could last more than two to three years between the submission of an application until the receiving of the final decision of the court. If the administrative procedure or the administrative court procedure needed to be repeated, this period could increase even up to five years and even in extreme cases up to 10 years. So the most important part of a judicial protection for citizens is how quickly they can receive the final decision for the court. And to promote this, the new Hungarian code introduced several new elements some of which are also known in the Polish regulations too. In today's presentation, I wish to give an overview 
uh, with the comparative aspects regarding these elements which helps to accelerate the receiving of the final decision of the court. First of all, I shall underline that the Hungarian code establishes rules that helps to realize a more concentrated litigation procedure. The essence of the principle to ensure the concentration of proceedings is that the court and the parties shall try to make available at an appropriate time all facts and evidences necessary to deliver the judgment in one single hearing. The addressing of this principle is in the one hand, the court and the other hand, the parties. Of course, it is the court's obligation to ensure the fair hearing and to complete uh, the low suite, to resolve the low suite within a reasonable time. This principle is fundamental, therefore it needs to be respected in general, but it also appears in some specific rules of the Hungarian code, for example, regarding the modification of the claims, which is possible until the first hearing. The next element I would like to underline is the differentiated in the installation of court powers. According to the importance, complexity, frequency of the case, the first instance jurisdictions are divided between court levels in Hungary. The cases which require special expertise are transferred to the highest judicial forum, to the Korea, which creates an opportunity for specialization, thus it raising the professional level of judicial activity and speeding up the procedures. If we regard Poland, similarly to Hungary, according to the Polish Act on the law on proceedings before administrative courts, the voyage court here as uh, to the principle all administrative matters except for the matters reserved for the jurisdiction of the Supreme Administrative Court, which is defined also, listed also in the Polish Act. In order to increase professionalism, the Hungarian Code restored the primacy of proceeding in the Council, but took into account also the complexity of different cases. Therefore, it is still possible that a single judge can proceed in first instance in the cases regulated in the code. Also, the court council in its preparatory deliberation may order that one member of the council proceed as a single judge if the education of the case is simple, both in the facts and legal aspects too. Also, regarding Polish law, similarly to Hungarian law, uh, Polish law provides as a rule of a panel of three judges hearing in a case at trial, both in administrative courts of first instance and second instance. However, an administrative court sitting in camera educates by a single judge unless otherwise provided by the statute. So this is similarly regulated uh, in Hungary and in Poland too. But I have mentioned uh, so-called preparatory deliberation. And what is it? Uh, this is, institution is not unknown in the Hungarian regulation, but before 2018, it was not regulated in detail as today it is regulated in the Hungarian code. For the purpose of preparing the hearing and proceeding within reasonable time, the court council shall take all necessary measures to ensure that the action can be educated on merits in one hearing. Measures may be taken before setting the date of the hearing or any time during the procedure if it's necessary. These measures are listed in the Hungarian code and you can see it on the PPT. As you see, these measures uh, are very powerful and the court has, court has gained wide-ranging powers in the preparatory deliberation period for allowing to get a final decision in one hearing. 
In the Polish law, the preparatory deliberation period is not expressed as verbis uh, as detailedly um, regulated as in the Hungarian uh, law. The next element and elements um, of the regulations which shall be stated in order to improve efficiency or in time is the differentiated system of interim uh, relief in the Hungarian uh, law. The purpose of the administrative law suite uh, is for the plaintiff to gain legal protection against an administrative act that violates his or her rights. However, without forgetting the fact that the submission of the claim does not have suspensory effect on the enforcement of the administrative act, some of the administrative acts have such a content that after the court's judgment, the original status cannot be restored or it would be disproportionately difficult. So the legal protection provided by the court would be insufficient in this case. Therefore, the Hungarian Code ensures that in the interim relief, suspensory effect of the act can be ordered, suspensory effect can be dissolved, any provisional measure can be taken, or even uh, it can be a primary uh, taking an evidence uh, case, uh, and it can be ordered, the court can order primary taking of evidence. Regarding the evidence taking, I would also underline that administrative court proceedings are not civil law, special civil law cases in which the evidence is presented in first in the court procedure. And administrative uh, court proceedings is not a next level, a new level of, uh, um, of administrative procedures. Therefore, there is only a limited possibility to make references to new evidence regarding the facts defined in administrative procedures in Hungary. And this is um, um, written down in the PPT that it's really much regulated in um, the code, uh, in the Hungarian code. Uh, Polish um, law, similarly to Hungarian legislation, refers, uh, the regulation of, uh, reg refers to the regulation of the code of civil court proceedings regarding evidence taking. Meanwhile, it seems for me that the Hungarian law is more stricter in the limits of presenting the evidences than the Polish uh, regulation. Um, other element um, which accelerates uh, to get the final decision is when the court decides we take an open hearing. Uh, this is also regulated uh, in the Hungarian and in the Polish law. Uh, the settlement and the mediation is another institution which also improves efficiency of time. During the settlement, the parties do not dispute on the legality of uh, public administration activity, but discusses the possible solutions for remedying the infringement. In order to reach a settlement, uh, court mediation uh, was also included in the toolbox of the Hungarian and in the Polish court too. The Polish law is even more detailed uh, than the Hungarian court regarding the rules of mediation. Meanwhile, this institution is not commonly used, nor in Hungary, neither in Poland. Um, I read the annual report of the Polish Supreme Court and the in the Polish Supreme Court even states, uh, Polish Supreme Administrative Court even states uh, that in 2020, mediation proceedings were initiated only in three cases and only in two cases uh, were uh, resolved by a settlement. Um, but there are some more colleagues um, uh, from the mediation team, so I will uh, leave this question open to, to them. I would note the next element, <clears throat> which, uh, which is the uh, possibility to amend the decision, um, uh, an administrative decision in the Hungarian code. When the nature of the case allows it and the facts are qualified and then uh, there was an administrative procedure which had already two instances or there was only one instance administrative procedure and it is allowed by the act the court has the opportunity to change an administrative decision that violates the law 
This is uh, facilitating the settlement of the legal dispute as soon as possible. Oppositely to this regulation, the general idea of the Polish administrative judiciary is that administrative court do not replace the public administration in its decision-making uh, process. For these reasons, um, before administrative courts, um, the cassation appeal based education educating is dominated uh, in Poland. Uh, the Hungarian code also regulates um, uh, so-called simplified procedures in which uh, cases are handled quickly and uh, more efficiently um, because these cases are very simple and these cases are related, for example, to an official verification uh, card or an official certificate. Also in the Polish law, we can find rules of simplified procedures uh, and cases are also listed in the Polish Act and in the Hungarian Act too. And uh, last but not least, I would like to present a very new element of the Hungarian Administrative Court Procedure Law. This is the model action. Uh, the purpose of this uh, institution is to speed up the handling of the legal dispute where on the same factual uh, and legal basis uh, there are several cases in front of the court and there are the court has to make a decision in many cases in parallel and for this purpose uh, almost the same procedure actions must be taken in terms of content in order to educate such proceedings very quickly uh, the hungarian code gives the possibility to ju the judge to the court um, to um, choose uh, one uh, proceedings and class classify it as a model action, as a model case. And use the evidence and the results of the legal interpretation obtained in this model case to make a decision in the other proceedings in front of the court. This is a very practical institution and it can be considered by the Polish legislature to, to codify it similarly to the Hungarian uh, law. As conclusion, I would like to make two notes. <clears throat> First of all, this list, um, these uh, rules of and these institutions are not complex and in my next presentation I will focus on the legal remedy possibilities regarding administrative court decisions in which we can also find elements uh, to accelerate the receiving of the final decisions. Secondly, uh, acknowledging that both from the point of view of the parties and also from the point of view of the legislator, legislator the efficiency of time to conclude a legal dispute is an important interest. Meanwhile, it cannot be the only goal to be achieved it cannot come to the expenses of professionalism at the lake of the justification of the decision and cannot uh, pose a risk uh, regarding the independence of the decision maker judge. And uh, thank you very much uh, for your um, attention. Thank you very much Gil, for your presentation, but um, uh, law in detail. Uh, comparing the Polish and the Hungarian regulations uh, in the administrative court procedures. And uh, now we, we turn to, to our next presenter, Mateusz Pszczynski. But before doing that, uh, I realized that there is a question uh, from Barbara Janusz Pol to, uh, to Professor Gabor Huku about, the, about who says the last words in, in the court court's battle. Uh, please, Gabor, uh, react to that question if you can. Yeah, thank you very much. I uh, already finished I my answer. Can, yeah, but you can also write it, also write it down. Yes, and, yes, uh, I, I, I actually finished the, the answer for this question. Uh, the, the, simple, the simplest answer is that I don't know. Uh, at, at the moment, but I will, I will send you also my, my, my answer for the question, but okay. uh, to be honest, I haven't considered this uh, this question yet, uh, but uh, as I try to try to uh, find a way around the rules and and uh, decisions and uh, and the approach of the member states, 
uh, my impression was that we need some more clarity in this matter and that that classical normative hierarchical approach seemed as a good idea to me that that uh, that uh, it, it brings some some clarity some system uh, as a whole uh, in the whole uh, procedure or the whole system uh, so uh, so 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 i have no no definite answer uh, for this question uh, it would be problematic to give it to the uh, to the CU uh, also, uh, but 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 also you cannot cannot give it to the member states as, as this is a, this is a particular uh, another another question. Uh, it, it needs to be researched from my side this question in the future. But thank you for the interesting interesting question and uh, uh, it, it is it is it is a food for my thoughts uh, in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you and. Um, please send send your your answer, and uh, I think uh, it depends on who is ask, asking or who who is asked. If you ask a national constitutional court, they they will answer that they are the they are saying the last word. If you ask the Luxembourg court, they also say that they have to give the the final answer. Some somehow it is also a question of of origin. The this the sovereignty or the powers of the European Union come from the member states it it is the member states who give uh, part of their sovereignty or part of their state powers uh, uh, to the institutions of the european union so if we we um, see it uh, from who, who gave power uh, to the other one um, the balance will will uh, take or give uh, to the member states but before before entering uh, this topic again. I'd like to ask Mateusz Pszczynski to start his presentation if he is if he's hearing and and uh, watching us. Are you here, Mateusz? Floor is yours. You can start your presentation. We are waiting for Mateusz Pszczynski starting his presentation, his lecture. Ah, yes. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that, for the floor. Um, I'm uh, joined to this team uh, in this month, so, uh, so my presentation is uh, in another part of uh, research. Uh, today, I would like to speak about uh, online hearing before an administrative uh, court during SARS-CoV epidemic period. Uh, we know that the situation was um, extraordinary for uh, everybody, for every state, every uh, court, and uh, many states prepare for this um, Iran, yeah, of course, not not uh, no one uh, except this uh, situation. Uh, in Poland, uh, uh, we uh, we for, uh, intro the introduction of an epidemic emergency uh, in relation to SARS-CoV-2 uh, infection took place on 14 uh, March 2020, based on the decree of Minister of Health. Uh, in first time, the decree imposed certain restrictions on economic circulation, restrict freedom of movement, including cross-border uh, movement, restricted freedom of assembly, and defined specific fun functional condition for health services. Uh, restriction of, uh, on the operation, of course, were introduced uh, uh, under the Act of uh, 2nd uh, March of 2020, and special solution related to the prevention, uh, prevention and combating of COVID-19, other infection disease, and crisis situation uh, caused by the uh, further. Uh, I call this uh, this act is this uh, bill of uh, COVID uh, COVID act. Uh, relevant court uh, for court proceedings uh, in Article 15 ZZS added as a result of uh, amended of uh, 31 March of 2020, which enters into force on the day of, of announcement. Uh, 
First one uh, to article uh, 15 uh, point first, uh, COVID act during the period of uh, epidemic emergency or a state of epidemic declared during COVID, the course of procedural deadlines uh, in inter alia administrative court proceeding does not commence and the one uh, commenced is suspended for that period. At the same time, uh, the holding of hearing and public hearings was suspended uh, after this, uh, this bill. This suspension, uh, suspension did not extend to criminal proceedings, uh, but uh, for, uh, for administrative uh, court is, uh, is uh, very important. The first circulation, uh, several limited access to court were due to ignorance of the full behavior of the virus, how it spread and the extent of incidence. Reports from other countries uh, spoke of the high virulence, the rapid progression of uh, disease, the lack of medical measures uh, to combat the virus, uh, which together with the uh, limited possibilities of hospitalization of the most serious ill, led to the introduction of restrictive legal instruments, not only in the field of justice, but is of all areas of social and economic uh, life. This phenomenon has occurred throughout the world with the intensity of the problems uh, and the centers involved. The key change occurred a few months later, uh, in 16 May of 2020, when the Article uh, 15 uh, ZZS of the COVID Act was replayed and replaced uh, to the extent of interest by Article uh, 15 ZZS with the point, uh, four uh, point of the COVID Act. Among other things, it set out the rules for the hearings of cassation appeals by the Supreme Administrative Court uh, and for an electronic hearing, closed session or public hearing in administrative court proceedings. Uh, according to this provision, during the period of the COVID-19 uh, emergency or epidemic state and within one year after the revocation of the epidemic state, the Supreme Administrative Court may hear the cassation complaint in a closed session. The holding of the closed session is possible even if one of the parties has not waived a hearing or the requesting a hearing and uh, upon notification of the intention to refer the cases to a closed session, agrees to it within 14 days of receiving the relevant information. At the same time, it was stipulating stipulated that the hearing before the Supreme Administrative Court in cassation cases is to be held with three judges. In addition, in accordance with Article 15 uh, ZZS 4 Paragraph 2 of the COVID-19 Act, uh, sittings of the Supreme Administrative Court and of provincial administrative courts during the period of an epidemic emergency or a state of epidemic declared due to COVID-19 and within one year from the uh, cancellation of the epidemic, may be heard or a hearing without good equipment allowing simulations transmission of video and audio, audio. It was allowed to attend the hearing both in the court building and in another place, if technically possible. In other words, the court could hold a hybrid, uh, hybrid hearing combining the presence of the panel in the court room with the participation of the other participants in another hall of administrative or the general court. At the same time, the provision stipulates that the hearing might be conducted in the traditional manner as long as it does not cause under risk to the health of the person, participants, both judges, court personnel, parties, and the uh, attorneys or other participants of proceedings. Uh, Article 15 ZZS for with paragraph, uh, paragraph uh, three of the COVID Act gives the presiding judge the authority to conduct the hearing in the form of cabinet, closed session. Necessary condition left to the discretion of the presiding judge are the risk of undue health risk for the participants in the hearing and the lack of technical possibilities of conducting the hearing remotely. At the same time, a three-member panel for it, camera hearings is specified. The law does not specify whether it is a chairman of the composition, 
uh, or the chairman of a department performing an administrative function. Uh, some authors, uh, for example, Pietrasz, uh, is a, he is a judge uh, in one of uh, Polish uh, administrative uh, court. On the basis of Article 72, 62, Law of Proceedings before Administrative Courts, deduce that is at the chairman of the department of a person acting on his or her behalf who sets the date of the hearings and the hearing and thus equally determines the form of the hearings in, in open court or hearing. Uh, the May amend did not last long, but uh, as the next amend to law came into force and uh, jury, uh, third jury of 2021, uh, there was a further restriction of the party's right by assuming that the Supreme Administrative Court is not bound by requ request for hearing and conducts the hearing of the case in three person closed session. At the same time, the amend uh, delayed the provision under which a hearing could be conducted in courtroom as long as it is conducted would be not case uh, a health risk for, for the participants. Thus, from the beginning of July of 2021, uh, the case could be heard either as closed session or in a remote hybrid session. This regulation is still in force as uh, although the state of epidemic uh, for SARS-CoV-2 infection was revoked uh, in May in this year, and at the same time, uh, a state epidemic emergency was introduced uh, and uh, the, day, uh, the date until further notice. There's no uh, indication that the, in the end of August uh, 2022, the Minister of Health will incline uh, the, the, the state of epidemic uh, emergency uh, closed uh, and, and uh, we, still, uh, we still work in, in uh, administrative Polish court uh, in extraordinary uh, form. Uh, in the case of an uh, epidemic uh, state in force and the lex specialis regulation of activities of inter alia, administrative court is connection with the outbreak of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Uh, another amendment was made to the provision affecting the manner in which administrative court hearings are conducting, resulting from the act of ele electronic delivery. Uh, this law amend Article 94, the law of uh, administrative court proceeding, uh, by adding uh, paragraph 2, according which the chairman may order that a public hearing be held using technical devices that allow to be uh, held remotely. A uh, prerequisite uh, for conducting an online hearing or a session also or call it remote, the location uh, or electronic hearing is that the participants of the hearing must be in a room of uh, other judicial panel located in the court building, administrative uh, buildings or uh, general court. Uh, the transmission takes place from the courtroom of administrative courts uh, to the participants in the session and from the room where the participants in the session are present the, to the courtroom uh, where the formation of, of the court is present. The communication involves the transmission of video and uh, audio in real time in two directions, uh, which does not follow uh, directly from the Article uh, 94, Paragraph 2, Act of Law and Proceedings before Administrative Courts. Uh, the adoption of recording for more or time delay would negate uh, the idea of hybrid uh, meeting or hearing before Administrative uh, Courts. Uh, a hearing of public hearing uh, remotely is an exception of the rule of holding uh, at the seat of the court at its order of the discretion of a proceeding judge. Uh, the lack of statutory criteria justifying the holding of hearing uh, uh, online is questionable. It may be assumed that Article uh, 94 of the uh, law of proceeding before administrative courts sets out a competence provision indicating the authority had not proceed either authorized to order a hearing, uh, online hearing, and the condition when it may be ordered arise from the uh, other provision. Uh, Article 15 ZZ4 Covidum Act 
Uh, it is a question exceptional uh, situation, just having the lack of direct contact between the formation of the court and the participants uh, in the hiring or trial or technical reason concerning, for example, for example, the size of courtroom uh, and the multiplicity, uh, multiplicity of participants or uh, the processing. Uh, another side, indirect points uh, out that the a trial implements inter alia the constitution principle of uh, reliability and efficiency in public institutions. Adoptedly, such a director of interpretation deserves attention, attention as the whole idea of electronification of public authorities serves especially to realize the, this principle. At the same time, if we accept it is a premise uh, defining the condition uh, of recognizing the order of an e-session, the scope of cases when this procedural solution can be introduced by in significantly extended. The introduction of the construction of uh, recognition in the provision is questioned should be assessed positively. It is the court that one on the basis is of its own knowledge in the case. Its complexity, its significance, for the public uh, interest, importance uh, for the public opinion, number of participants, uh, occurrence of extraordinary situation, uh, for example, connected with the epidemic. Uh, now we have a situation that uh, administrative court should uh, should uh, hearing uh, by uh, internet, uh, in, in, but. Uh, judicial practice clearly shows that administrative courts have adopted adjunction in closed session, occasionally only allowing for a hybrid, uh, hybrid say, hearing. This is pointed by uh, few authors. For example, in 2021, uh, in, uh, there were uh, 888 free person in camera hearings in the finance chamber. Uh, it was chamber of Supreme Administrative Court why there was only 206 hybrid hearings. At the same uh, time, in commercial chamber uh, of uh, the separate uh, administrative court, where the majority of cassation appeals were heard in camera hearings and only 55 uh, by electronic communication. The uh, 2021 reports, uh, reports uh, from uh, Supreme Administrative Courts uh, not indicates how many cases uh, here in hybrid mode and how many were hit in closed hearings. Uh, it was true that for 2020, where the finance chamber held a few hearings online, the economic chamber indicates the most were decided in closed session in general administrative um, chamber did not address that issue at all. Also, the uh, a review of the electronic docket for the individual cases of 2022 uh, showed that predomination of closed session of remote over remote session. The majority of closed hearings occur although the property were. For example, provincial, uh, provincial uh, administrative court in Gliwice, uh, approximately half of these cases are heard in closed hearing. And in the uh, uh, 2021, uh, in uh, administrative court in Gliwice, uh, nearly 80% uh, of the cases were heard in closed hearing. In other courts, the prevalence of closed hearings is over higher. Uh, preliminary, this statistic confirms that this is that administrative courts prefer closed hearing over remote hearings. Of course, the question immediately arises: why? Courts prefer closed hearings, and uh, there are many several reasons for such uh, implementation of a permissible statutory resolution, lying both on the side of the courts themselves, other participants uh, in the proceeding, but also being the adoption of such a, and not other legal regulation. Undoubtedly, an important limitation is the location of the participants of remote hearing, the seat of the court. Of, of course, during the um, uh, uh, COVID uh, epidemic, uh, it's not uh, necessary. You can uh, sit in another place, the building. Uh, 
but uh, courts don't 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 use this uh, this uh, article. Uh, Next problem, uh, next issue is connected with the uh, uh, situation, but uh, the connection with the uh, uh, technical problem, connection with uh, court, because uh, we, we using the uh, Webex messenger, and if you want to uh, hear uh, court uh, online, you must uh, you should seven days before schedule meeting. Uh, uh, connect and uh, submit the declaration that he or she uh, has the equipment necessary to participate in the online, online hiring and uh, next uh, he or she receives a link to the meeting. Uh, the statement of the link is sent via electronic platform for public administration uh, services. And uh, unfortunately, a uh, limitation of the communicator is that it's not possible to file any documents in the case. They, therefore, the participants must at last three days before the hearings report via the court office or a post operator. It is also possible to send via electronic platform of public administration service, and some uh, judges uh, uh, prefer this uh, this way. Uh, I will talk about the limitation of evidence in online court proceedings at the next uh, seminar, so uh, I will only sign this, uh, that is the issue. Uh, comparing the solution uh, resulting from the act of uh, proceeding before administrative courts and the Covidium Act, it should be stated that the terms of the place of participation uh, in the online session the extraordinary procedure regulation is more liberal. This is because it's, uh, it does not limit the choice of venue only to administrative or general court uh, buildings. With the scarcity of premises in the judiciary, it can be problematic to find a room outside the seat of the administrative court handling the case. In addition, the very proce process of organizing, organizing a hearing outside the seat of the court poses the risk of prolonging proceedings if the court is unable to organize such a venue. For example, scheduling other uh, hearings at the regional or district uh, court. Another uh, limitation or even disadvantage in this is the fact that the online hearing must take uh, court uh, premises. Uh, while the provision limiting uh, the place of the remote hearing to premises corresponding to the dignity of the court is understandable, such a narrow interpretation uh, is uh, incompressible. The question arises whether this cannot be extended to the other types of premises. After all, the public administrative body, which is a part of court administrative proceedings, dispose a room corresponding to the specific of hearing of certain extent. Also, uh, attorneys, courts, uh, councils, uh, self-governing bodies of councils or attorneys uh, generally have such premises. Uh, and it could be used for the online participation action before the courts. This, 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 could, uh, this would broaden the base of venue uh, where on court participants in an electronic hearing with the solemnity inherent in a court of law. An important value of the online hearing is the possibility to be outside the court premises, in a place more convenient for the parties, the attorney or another participants of the proceedings. Administrative courts, especially in large provinces, uh, are more distant from the seat of the legal entity or place of residence than common courts. Commuting to a hearing is adopted an additional burden of a party, especially if he or she is temporarily or permanently abroad and wants or needs to attend a court session. Thus, the advantage of change of venue online or broadening of the range of venue, availability for this hearing of more or time, but also in terms of the comfort associated with the not being afraid of the courtroom, a certain formalization of behavior and the stress of attending hearing. On the other hand, too much living, freedom of behavior, dress, 
plays are not fully compatible with the series of the corners and the activities on the table. As pointed out by Piontek, the judge from uh, Poznań, in the case of remote hearing, the issue of maintaining the dignity of the court, attire of judges, etc., requires searching for an adequate solution suitable for an online court. It is worth noting the discussion is the forum in the forum of solicitors or barristers who discuss to the obligation of to wear a robe when appearing in online court, uh, which existed in some courts, uh, common courts, not uh, specially administrative courts, and uh, the on other uh, common courts, uh, not in others. Similarly, the uh, issue of standing up in front of a monitor screen during the pronouncement of a judgment and the bizarre situation this entailed being a consequence, for example, using camera on a laptop and not on the tripod. Thus, the half hidden solution with respect of the determination of the place of participation in the hearings or online hearings is adopted a big drawback of the adopted solution and resulting from uh, Article 94 law of proceeding before administrative courts. One cannot fully understand why the solution adopted in uh, extraordinary law uh, in Article 15 ZZS Covidum Act was abandoned. The right of appeal before administrative tribunal is one more of essential elements of due process. The most important element uh, of its whether way, a party retains the right to be heard in the case, a characteristic feature of the proceeding before uh, administrative court of first instance is the assessment of the contented administrative actum from the point of view of its legality. Evidentiary proceedings in this respect are not as a rule, carried out and oral are only expressional supplements by documentary evidence. The parties usually express their view extensively on the pre-litigation stage. The party is complained against the decision, the public administration body in its uh, response of the complaint. The emergency situation caused by the virus has forced a reduction in interhuman contacts, including in the courts. Uh, awareness of this state of affairs, the change of in the public hearing formula, the right to opt out of requesting a public hearing have also forced a change in practice, both of courts and of professional attorneys. It seems that also technical problems for the quality of the connection of the, to the preparation of courtrooms or uh, officers for effective and high standard participation uh, in the online hearing have determined the lower number of remote hearings. It is a bit of a pity that the state, the courts, but also the parties did not push for a wider use of like courts. The technical inconvenience, change of habits and legislative, legislative stumblings, blocks that have occurred are fixable. And experience of the courts from the time of SARS-CoV-2 epidemic is uh, inavailable and shows that needs to be changed and what to keep from the period for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mateusz Pszczynski, for your presentation. And uh, I think uh, I'm the only one from the group, from the team, who did not make his presentation. But uh, if I look at the clock, at the time, it's almost six o'clock. So I try to. I try to share my my screen and uh, cut my speech short. Uh, I need your your patience. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Can you see my? Presentation by PPT? Yes, we can. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I try to. No. Okay. So, um, my chosen topic is uh, 
as a short story, um, the Hungarian government and the parliament decided to introduce, to reintroduce the separate administrative court system in two, 2018. And uh, soon after only one year of, of planning and legislation, uh, the whole project was postponed and now it, it finally delayed. Um, and uh, I always hesitate whether to tell the story or whether to analyze uh, the story. Uh, now I try to, to make the two. So I partly I'm partly telling the story of, uh, of these two years and uh, partly analyzing reasons behind it and uh, um, the quarrels, the, uh, the high level of, of resistance against uh, the new administrative court system in Hungary. Um, today in 2022, we are not surprised uh, when there is a, an, an enormous resistance against uh, anything uh, in a court system of a member state. If there is a decision or plan about a new court, about changing uh, court's powers, uh, the changing the components of, of the courts, uh, the the European power center or the European decision making center, Brussels, Luxembourg, uh, always uh, uh, show resistance against these decisions and plans. After the the example of Poland, the the reorganization of the Supreme Court uh, and the debate with the European institutions, today we are not surprised. But the story I'm telling, uh, I'm talking about is is from 2018, uh, which was a promising year for uh, for the establishment, for establishing the separate administrative court system. Um, as the majority of, of our group was, was taking part in the previous uh, uh, 2021 research group, um, I do not want to talk about in detail about the the legal history of the court history of Hungary, but we had we had a separate court, separate administrative court. It was closed. It was abolished by the communist regime in in forty eight, and as as in the majority of the European countries, uh, who re-established or introduced a separate administrative court system after thirty years, after thir almost thirty years, the Hungarian government, the Hungarian parliament, uh, decided to to rebuild the separate and specialized administrative courts. Um, it started with the constitutional amendment as the court structure is, is a question of constitution. The constitution itself uh, shall provide for the main structure of the courts. And the seventh amendment of the fundamental law of Hungary uh, introduced a double court system or, or uh, uh, written down a double court system, ordinary courts with ordinary courts and administrative courts. Uh, soon in that year, after three or four months of, of uh, legislation, uh, the new Act on Administrative Courts and act entering into force of that Act on Administrative Courts was enacted by the Parliament uh, by the end of the year uh, in December. Even the venue for the highest administrative court was named. Um, the, the town in Estergom, on the north uh, of Hungary, on the Slovakian and Hungarian border, as Estergom uh, is considered to be the first capital, the first center of, of the Christian Hungarian state. Uh, although there are, there are debates between two cities, Székesfehérvár, and Estergom uh, is debating uh, who was, which was the first capital, which was the first center of power. Uh, there are uh, um, academics, there are researchers who emphasize the importance of Székesfehérvár uh, as uh, the judicial center of, uh, of the country, and others emphasize the importance of Estergom uh, as the, the first center of the Hungarian state. Uh, it is uh, very difficult to talk about uh, a state 1,000 years ago. Uh, uh, of course, the states, uh, the organization and structures look quite differently than today. 
the the name uh, the venue for the the highest administrative court was a kind of uh, a tribute to the first center of of the, this country and uh, there uh, it was uh, known by the draft from the drafts of uh, of these act of administrative courts that eight other regional courts will be organized as well and uh, there was a shadow from the beginning of the project uh, there was a shadow on the on the project from the beginning that uh, the conditions for the eight regional courts uh, was not defined well uh, as the separate administrative court courts were part of a separate system and separate in in all meanings in financially uh, infrastructurally uh, and personally and personal um, and there was a hesitation about buildings about uh, infrastructural conditions 2018 uh, year 2019 uh, witnessed the starting and uh, at the same time the ending of the project um, we had and we have a national office of judiciary this is an independent agency an autonomous agency responsible for the management and the central administration of the courts of the all courts and uh, the president of the national office of judiciary started a special project uh, she named it project for transition transition from a system of ordinary courts a single system uh, of ordinary courts to a double system where we uh, we can see ordinary courts and administrative courts at the same time transition from the national office of judiciary as a sole system manager the only system manager uh, of the courts of the external administration of the courts as one of the main novelties in uh, act and administrative courts uh, appeared to be the re-establishing the ministerial management the the minister of justice would have became as the central manager uh, the central administration of the nine administrative courts the highest administrative court and the eight regional courts um, and of of course establishing a court system is not only to uh, to enact the laws it's not only to change the laws it needs real uh, administration and real organization as uh, the transition uh, was also needed from a single and unified systems of support the IT system the file management system archiving system and infrastructure so the transition needed from a single system of support to a double system of support the Ministry of Justice as the future uh, system manager of the administrative courts joined the project only by the end of February it was a bit late and uh, there could not be seen any advancement in building the new court management within the Ministry of Justice in February in March and then April uh, during the intensive intense period of the transition project uh, there could have been no signs within the ministry of justice showing the capacity the capability uh, and ability to to um, start the new management system and uh, because of this uh, because of this delay because of uh, joining the project too late showing no signs of of uh, uh, real um, um, capacity of of management the postponement of the system appears a real option even before the real postponement on the other side other side after the enactment of the two laws enactment of of uh, the act on administrative courts sudden fears appeared about the new system both in the country and in and internationally uh, the fears some of the fears uh, came from political side having political roots others came from 
from the judiciary, from the judicial organizations, and uh, the fears mainly concentrated on on the question why, uh, why now, why the new system is in, introduced introduced now, why not before, why not later, and why is it introduced? Intro, why it is introduced so quickly? Uh, we we should use uh, quotation marks as the process was not quick uh, at all. Why the court system is, is separate? Why is the new court system for administrative courts, administrative jurisdiction separated completely from ordinary courts? And uh, the main question was uh, the ministerial system management, the question of ministerial system management as uh, many critics uh, uh, observed the ministerial role, the role of a minister of justice as a sign, a clear sign of uh, government interference with the uh, machinery of judiciary. Other fears concentrated on the independence of the new courts, saying that these new courts separated from the ordinary courts that should be should deem independent. So that after separation, the new courts will lose or not establishing at all their independence. Um, the independence of the courts was questioned mainly on the basis of the influence of the political sphere, the minister, the cabinet, the government, and the new president uh, who uh, was about to be nominated by the end of May in 2019. Um, Talking about administrative justice, mainly on the, on the top level, on the high level of uh, administrative justice, we know that uh, there are important cases at stake. Uh, competition cases, public procurement cases, taxes, investments on the economic side, and of course, elections, the validity of uh, parliamentary elections, the validity of, of local government elections, the seats in the parliament, seats in, in the major cities, uh, the legal debates about it all go to the administrative courts. And uh, uh, it is also important to mention the role of the National Council of Judges, which in Hungary is an elected body, elected by judges from amongst other judges. And uh, uh, they have the power to control the National Office of uh, Judiciary, the President of National Office uh, of judiciary is uh, in some uh, territories of, of uh, his activity is responsible to that council. After the separation, after establishing the separate court, the influence of the elected National Council of Judges uh, would have been seized uh, concerning administrative courts, uh, but in the new Act of Parliament, new Acts of Parliament, separate new uh, judicial bodies and the new National Con Council of Administrative Judges would have been established. The new Acts of Parliament and drafts uh, amending the new Acts was examined by the Venice Commission that gave an uh, opinion uh, at the beginning of 2019 that was supportive in general or it was supportive in general questions saying that uh, creating a new separate legal order in the area of administrative law falls within the sovereign right of a national legislator. Of course it falls. It's part, that, that is part of sovereignty to say what kind of courts decide what kind of cases under which law. And this fully in line with European standards and practices said the Venice Commission. And we, we have to know that in, in the majority of the European Union member states, uh, there are separate administrative courts, at least one level, the highest level or the middle level or the lowest level. Uh, there are only three countries today, Hungary, Estonia and Malta, and there are no separate administrative courts at all. And it was supported in general concerning the minister as a system manager. The Venice Commission uh, accepted the, the position of the minister and uh, uh, his role or her role as a system manager is beyond question, said Venice Commission. And of course, the, the Venice acknowledges advantages, uh, emphasizing that 
all current administrative judges, all current judges wishing to be incorporated uh, in the new courts, new administrative court system, uh, had the opportunity uh, to, to transfer to the new system. Uh, what were the problems? What were the main drawbacks under Venice Commission? I don't want to talk much about the, the political uh, or, or half political and half professional criticism uh, uh, because we are, uh, I think we are out of time. So uh, according to Venice Commission, the main drawbacks concentrate um, on the extensive powers uh, of a few stakeholders and having no effective checks and balances to counteract those powers. Who were the, the few stakeholders? The presidents of the eight administrative courts, the president of the uh, highest administrative court and the minister of justice uh, himself. The extensive powers uh, under the Venice Commission opinions uh, were the powers to decide, the power to manage and power to administer, admin, administer the courts themselves, uh, to decide who is nominating, uh, who is uh, leading a panel or presiding a panel. I think these powers were not extensive at all. They were normal powers of of a court president, normal powers of high court president and normal powers of a system manager. Another notable, notable drawbacks uh, um, were the broad powers by the minister, of the minister. Uh, what kind of broad powers should we imagine? It was the minister under the, the law uh, that had the power to, uh, to nominate uh, the new new uh, members of the court um, of the high court today it is in the, in the hands of the national office of of judiciary and the president of the curia there are nothing new nothing uh, novel powers within the hands of the minister and the presidents of the courts uh, all these powers uh, can be seen or could be seen in any other um, uh, European Union member states court systems. Um, the checks and balances, the, the condition or requirement of checks and balances that comes from, uh, from our, our um, division of powers or separation of power system uh, became a requirement within uh, one branch of state power, within the judiciary itself. Uh, and uh, the Venice Commission's uh, uh, drawbacks resulted in, in proposals to change the law. And five significant changes was required by the Venice Commission, was needed uh, by the opinion of the Venice Commission. And the final amendment of the two law started in March 2019. So the government, the, minist the Ministry of Justice, started to, to uh, write amendments to the law. And uh, finally, it was not supported, not even discussed by the cabinet uh, of ministers in May. By the time, uh, almost all administrative judges declared to transfer to the new system. More than 160 judges uh, exercising uh, or uh, dealing with administrative law cases in the ordinary court system declared to transfer to the new system. And the deadline closed in the nomination, nomination of the future president by the end of May 2019. It was, it was uh, uh, the power of the head of state, the president of the country, to nominate uh, the new president and, of course, the parliament. Hungarian parliament was about to, to elect the new president. Uh, the uh, one day before this deadline, the cabinet of ministers announced that uh, they will postpone the uh, introduction of the system and no nomination was made by the head of state. Uh, 
as uh, he explained in a, in a uh, press statement, he had uh, hadn't found uh, appropriate person to nominate in the whole Hungarian judiciary. And finally, uh, the parliament in June, uh, in 2019, in June, enacted a new law, an act of postponement, and this act of postponement declared that the judges' declarations of transfer invalid. So 164 uh, judges' declaration was uh, uh, said invalid by the act of parliament. That ended the the one-year project of establishing uh, a new and separate administrative court system. And the the main reason uh, after this postpone uh, behind this postponement was the international criticism. In the core of the critis criticism, uh, we could found uh, the powers of minister, the powers of presidents uh, that are essential for managing and administer administering a system from outside and the court from inside. Uh, whether these uh, uh, requirements are in line with international standards, I will examine in the next uh, presentation in September. Thank you for your attention. And I hope that I could uh, take this presentation uh, short enough, not consuming all of the time. Um, and now I am sharing. Yeah, thank you very much, Mati, and thank you all for attending the seminar. Uh, we have to end the interview of another seminar, so um, uh, I could really uh, invite you all to this uh, presentation. So thank you very much, and see you there. So, thank you very much. Thank you, and I'm sorry for taking that much time. But it is always the bad luck of the last presenter so dear colleagues thank you very much for for your presentations uh, thank you very much for your attention and uh, we will meet next time in september good luck for everyone and take care